Hey, welcome to the show. If this is your first time joining us, welcome. Today we're going to talk about House of X, specifically House of X number six, the last issue of House of X. It reveals a few secrets, but it really uh, is foreshadowing something a little bit more sinister going on. So we'll break down the events of the issue. We'll look at the companion text pieces and we'll go into a little bit of speculation about what we think might be coming next so let's check it out today on comic book news hey welcome to the show today we're going to talk about house of x number six written by jonathan hickman with art by pepe raz We've been enjoying the series. We've been getting lots and lots of new viewers. So if you're new to the show because you're looking for info on House of X, welcome. Uh, We're going to talk about this issue. You know, this is the final issue of House of X, but there's one last issue of Powers of X. And while this one does reveal a little bit of new information, it really leaves a single sinister question... um, heavily foreshadowed and unanswered so let's take a look at what happened and speculate on what's going to happen going forwards and what's the best way to do that of course it's in the million dollar comics cam so you'll notice the trade dress here a little bit different than what was in the the image that i showed no big house of x logo it's sort of this small logo of course there's multiple covers to choose from so who knows um We start off with a quote like we have in a lot of these books lately. Uh, This is a quote from Professor X. Is what we have perfect? No, what is? But it's a start and a good one. This is a quote we're going to see later on in the book. So this uh, takes place, despite being the latest issue of House of X, it's taking us all the way back to the beginning. In fact, a month before uh, the beginning of House of X. This is when uh, Charles first decides to reveal to the world... Um, the sort of modified mutant plan. It's like, we're not uh, just going to help you guys anymore. We're going to provide these super drugs to the world in return for acceptance. Now, we'll come back to this, but it's a little bit weird to me that we have yet to see Charles Xavier's face in this series. And the way that it is hidden in this sequence until he puts this helmet on, I I mean, is could it... It's either deep foreshadowing or a complete red herring, and I don't think that it's a red herring. Something is going on. This is not, in some way, this is not the Professor X that we think it is. Is it something that would be revealed by removing that helmet? I I would assume so, otherwise why not show it? So your guess is as good as mine uh, on this one, folks, but I have a feeling we're going to find out in the next Powers of X. Anyway, um... We get to see them, Charles Xavier basically lay it out, lay out the plan for humanity. Like, look, we're not, we're not really asking anymore. You didn't really earn um, our love and our trust. You've hunted us from the very beginning. So, like, we're not asking anymore. We're, we're, we're telling you how it's going to be. If you want this stuff, you're going to uh, recognize the new nation, mutant nation of Krakoa. And you're also going to give complete amnesty to all mutants, right? So including supervillain mutants. And we're going to deal with them mutant justice style. And this is now, uh, in, the, in in our last review, we looked at the Quiet Council of Krakoa. And it, it, here in the text section, we filled in a lot more. And we'll come back to this text section uh, after we get through the comics pages. Of which, by the way, there are 21 pages of true comics in this and then i counted about seven additional pages of stuff that is okay and then five pages of what i would call complete filler we'll give it we'll get into that at the end so this is where we finally see the first meeting of the council of krakoa of which we've got 11 of the 12 members completely identified and present at this we've got sort of the old school x-men we've got the hellfire club we've got the sort of like um uh, villainous uh uh house if you will 
Uh, and then we've got the sort of old guard leadership, right? These guys have been around from the beginning. <coughs> uh, Doug and Krakoa, the actual island is a living entity. So Doug Ramsey, Cypher, is on board to like translate and talk to Krakoa, to take the council's wishes and, and um, communicate them to Krakoa. And who are we going to judge today but uh, Sabretooth? Right, so in the previous issues, he was arrested uh, by the Fantastic Four, and he had killed a bunch of people, which was ex kind of explicitly against what Mag how Magneto had asked him to go about it. And this is where we get into some nine-page panel grid stuff, and I love it. Right, this is old school. A lot of dialogue, a lot of meat, lot to read here, a lot of characterization, not decompressed storytelling it's recompressed storytelling i mean it's not the sort of dense overly tortured claremont or even stan lee style dialogue where things obvious things are repeated and catchphrases used over and over again no it's it's well written dialogue that's fun to read that has a lot to say right and basically it's uh the the council uh Deciding, oh, but the, the 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 arm of the villainous arm, by the way, is Mystique, Mister Sinister, and this dude Exodus, who I've been learning more about, but have not really read any previous comics of. Um, so anyway, these guys all hate Sabretooth. Apparently, he's an asshole. Nobody nobody in the uh, <laughs> mutant community really likes this guy. I've got no reason to protect him, and he's like, dude, I'm gonna kill. You. I'm not just gonna kill you guys. I'm gonna kill. Everyone in your family and your line, I'm gonna eliminate you. Blah 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 blah. He's a psychopath, right? So they're like, "Not nah, you're gone, you're done." Um, but what? What's gonna happen? They 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 discuss it. They've discussed it, and um, what are they gonna do to this poor guy, right? What is mutant justice gonna be like? Um. So before we get to that, sorry, sorry, I skipped ahead of myself. Uh, they're discussing like what are the core values of of this new mutant nation going to be. Okay. And so they basically, they talk it over, they talk it over. They're like, look, it's, we, we know it's bad to kill a mutant. Do we, it's kind of, but we're all immortals now anyway, since we can be rebooted. So do we really need to say the worst thing you can do is kill another mutant? I don't think so. Cause you really can't anymore. So they talk it over, they talk it over and they come up with their, their, their three rules, right? So murder, no humans. That's their number one rule, right? Because that's just going to bring problems down. So let's just make it a law. We're, we're all about, at least we can tell the world, we're all about, you know, we don't kill non-mutants. Um, of course, uh, respect the sacred land, meaning Kr Krakoa. So Krakoa is like their holy ground. There's going to be no beefing when they're on Krakoa. There's no property ownership because Krakoa is not a place, really. It's an entity. It's a living being. And so you can own land outside of Krakwa if you want, and, and they'll respect property rights and things like that. But really, uh, respect this land, murder no man. And then they ask Nightcrawler, they're like, hey, you, dude, you believe there's actually a higher power than mutants because you're a Christian, right? So what, what is your God? What's your Messiah got to say about this, Flanders? Uh, and of course, uh, his answer is be fruitful and multiply. So make more mutants. These are gonna. These are the three first three core laws of Krakoa and and mutantdom, right? We're gonna make more mutants. We're not gonna kill people, and we're gonna like respect the homeland. Okay, on to justice for Sabretooth, right? Or is it? Because they're like, look, we're 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 more, mutants are are immortal, so like we we're not gonna kill you because then what, we could resurrect you or we'd have to resurrect you? He says the mutant resurrection protocols would kick in. It's not clear why they couldn't just kill him and not resurrect him. Um, like, we don't have jails, so we can't just put him in jail, right? That would be inhumane. So no, we're not going to do that. We're not going to kill him. We're not going to put him in jail. No, we're going to do something a little different. We're going to put him into deep stasis in the core of Krakoa. But he's still going to, his mind is going to be active. So it's like complete solitary confinement where your mind is still going. That's can't be good for the mental condition of anybody, let alone our pal Sabretooth, right? 
And not to mention it's completely cruel. And he and 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 Charlie's like, uh, we're putting you down there until we find need of you. Maybe we might who knows we might need you, and if we do, we'll pull you out. Till then, you're gone, sucker. Pretty cruel. You're exiled, right? So how this does not qualify as a prison, I don't know. It's actually way crueler than a prison would be. I guess they don't have to spend a lot of money on prison upkeep. I, whatever it is, you know, Sinister Charlie, who we haven't seen his face, he's got this sort of ruling council, and he's dispensing this kind of justice. We've there's mis, there's an unspoken mystery going on here about who this version of Charles Xavier is. Okay, back to Krakoa. Man, they're partying, they're celebrating uh, with fireworks. And Dazzler, I guess, is generating fireworks and they're going nuts and they're cracking brewskis, right? And they're and they're and they're partying and like what the 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 lion's laying down with the lamb and look here's Marvel Girl passing a brewski over to White Queen and Queenie giving the eye to Cyclops and Havoc and they're knuckleheading and like everything is great. Oh man, everything is so awesome. Right? Apocalypse sort of watching from the side. He's like, mm, I don't know. Something else maybe. And then here's our godfathers of the movement. Just look at what we've made. That's the end of the comics. We go into some text sections here. We go into some maps. A little hard to see. Um, all the detail on this uh, on the Million Dollar Comics camera. Let's maybe I zoom in a little bit. Um, but anyway, what we've got here is uh, we're, we're laying out Krakoa. And apparently there's two versions of Krakoa. There's the Atlantic and the Pacific version, right? And the Atlantic version, well, we've got the Pacific version here and we've got this key that refers to both of these things. Now, why this key couldn't be on a single page with all the maps and like condense this down instead of three pages into one or maybe two? Is it padding? Okay, I gave this the benefit of the doubt. I didn't call this padding. I called this bonus material. Um, so anyway, we get to see a lot. We get to see that they can basically, there's, there's like Krakoa can kind of like teleport you, transport you. So you can go from one island to the other from this point, 19 to this point also labeled 19 right and then this the, the the atlantic island it looks like is mostly devoted to like this is like their danger room this is their danger island cool idea i like that um and and that's about it right uh, most of the action and everything that we've seen has been in the pacific it's more of a pacific kind of tropical island so we see all the stuff in here the cradle the reservoir bar sinister right uh which is the, the island that we saw Mr. Sinister is on. He's got his own little island here. and It's laid out. It's pretty cool. It's a neat map. Not bad. I've seen better. If you want to see better too, you should check out my review or my interview coming up on Friday with one Elliot R. Brown, the official cartographer of Gotham City and the Marvel Universe. He's also designed all those cool... Uh, uh, diagrams and stuff check it out that's going to drop on Friday you're not going to want to miss that if you like this kind of backup material you've got to check out my interview it's a long one but man he is the king of this kind of backup material and uh, I would love to see him working more on stuff like this um, anyhow back to the show uh, what did we get out of this issue right text pieces I just showed you the maps there's a couple more um, things. Another quote, just look what we've made, the final quote. This I call filler. The first quote, filler, and this is, because you don't need a whole page to do what a tiny caption box at the top of the page really could have done just as effectively. I, I dig that there are artistic choices to be made about, you know, page reveals and pacing and everything else. So I kind I respect that. I feel like, I broke down this this stuff into like stuff that I felt was really filler and stuff that was actually useful. And this one had a lot of filler. Uh, as we'll see, we've been seeing this reading order. This has been very handy to know what's coming. Next week, final one, Powers of X. And as you can see, it's highlighted in red. 
those have been key reveals in those three, uh, the three red bar issues. So my guess for Powers of X uh, number six is that we're going to see the, the reveal of Charles or what has happened just kind of before what we saw uh, in the beginning of this issue when, when before he dons the helmet. At least I hope so, right? I don't know if we're going to start this whole series with the complete mystery of, of Xavier or not. Um, I kind of hope not. I want to know the status quo at the end of uh, Powers of X. So, hey man, if nothing else, Hickman knows how to keep you on the edge of your seat and come back for more, right? Which I am. I, I'm, I might nitpick a little bit about this filler stuff, but um, I'm not complaining because there's enough readable stuff and enough stuff to speculate on and enough density to this storytelling. Like, look, we got some... Now, when's the last time you read a comic that just had like pages of nine panel grid conversation that was and it is actually like dense conversation not just like little bits and pieces hickman is delivering great characterization really moving the plot forward in big chunks per issue it's not as stretched out it's still meant to be collected and read in the whole but it's it's making each chunk a more satisfying read and and and, and it's working for me um, okay, so back to the council. So what did we get revealed um, here? So we got everybody revealed but one. We saw the whole council today. We're just missing one thing. In the uh, Hellfire Club, the spring uh, wing, if you will, uh, we're missing one. It looks like, spoiler alert here, solicitation stuff has shown some stuff that make it revealed that it looks like it's going to be Kitty Pride, which is an interesting choice. I would have thought maybe Black Queen or something, but this is going to be... Um, not a red king, but a red queen, as I understand it. Um, we're going to find that out soon. So um, that's, we'll call that informed speculation. And what do we see besides this, the, the council that we saw uh, and, and the, the two, two adjuncts, if you will, of Krakoa, the island, you know, we've got the, the four wings and then we've got what we call the great captains, right? And these are basically like, uh, the, the bosses of like various super teams, I guess you would say, right? So we've got Cyclops, Gorgon, Bishop, and Magic, and uh, and Cyclops is designated the what is he the uh, he's the captain? No, he's the he's the uh, chief captain. No, he's the captain commander. That's what he is. Oh, that's great. He's captain commander. Uh, so that means he's a head of, chief among equals. So he's the head of the heads. So go Cyclops, Gorgon, who is not the Inhumans character Gorgon, as some thought, uh, but the sort of hand character who could turn you to stone. He's got the samurai swords. I think he comes from the Wolverine canon. Again, it's a character I haven't read a lot, but I've seen in recent years in in comics. Um, and then Magic as sort of the, I guess, the, the new mutant's arm that we can expect to see a lot more from. And we see another little nice graphic and kind of breakdown of the of the council. Did this need to be a separate page? Could it have just been a graphic on this page and condensed to one? Maybe. Did we lose story? I guess is the big question. And the the I mean, we got twenty one pages of comics and five pages of of useful stuff. So that's like twenty six pages. Still a little light on content, but it feels like a lot more in the hand and when you're reading it. And what do we got for next week? Well, I've gotten, I'm not, I've gotten to where I can kind of just eyeball this stuff, but we translated this before, but I can tell this just says House of X. So next time in Powers of X, we're going to look at the true foundations of the House of X. Man, what an, a, another great issue in another great series. I'm fired up to read the Dawn of X stuff. I'm going to give all the new number ones a try. I, I, I was only going to, go for the Hickman stuff, but I've decided I'll at least read the number one issues of all of it just to give it a chance because, hey man, I haven't had been excited about X-Men or mutant comics for a really long time. You know, another thing I'm super excited about is uh, my upcoming interview with uh, Mr. Technical Elliot R. Brown. So it's going to drop this uh, Friday morning. If you love this kind of like technical diagrams and stuff, uh, talking about equipment and 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 maps and and weapons and all the kind of stuff uh that 
some comic book uh, lovers really dig, then you're going to love this interview. Make sure to check it out. Thanks for watching this, and uh, we'll see you next time.